well, I hope you guys can see these pretty well. <clears throat> these two plants right here were growing wild in this spot, in these two spots. There was a couple of other ones that were in here. But when I planted this bed with zinnias and sunflowers, these guys were already here. And I ran out of zinnias, and I just happened to have two amaranth already growing in some holes, so I just left those and let them grow with these zinnias in here. <clears throat> but this one right here, you can kind of see, has got red flowers and green leaves, green stem. And this one here has a red flower, but the, the leaves used to be a bright green, but now they're starting to turn a more rusty tint color, maybe as, as it gets older. But if you look at these flowers, they're totally different. The way this flower's growing and the way this one's growing. And let me bring this up close so you can get a better look. But if you look at this flower right here, see how it kind of has like these big clumps? It's, it's, it, it grows in real big clumps and it's got these branches all the way at the bottom like the wild green variety that grows in here. And you can kind of see these flowers even look like that green variety. They're real, real round and clumpy. So, uh, so it's got a green stem, lots of branches, green leaves, but it has red flowers. Which is telling me that this here is probably a cross between this wild pigweed that grows here and this Mexican variety of amaranth with the beautiful red flowers on it. Now, this one right next to it is a little bit different. Maybe I could kind of show you what the flowers look like. This one's got the big clumps. This one has beautiful little tendrils like this. It's not real clumpy. And the cool thing about this one, this one here is probably my, my favorite plant in the whole garden. The coolest part about this is it also had a, a, a greenish stem. It's almost greenish red. And it, it, it does have a few branches on it, but they're not long and sprawling. They don't come all the way out to here and make the plant more bushy. They're, they're kind of perfect. They kind of go up with the plant. And you can see it's got these these little tendril type flowers, a lot like the big one over there. And it's only maybe, well, it's about as tall as me, I'd probably say it's almost six foot. But it's got a beautiful flower spike on here, if you look at that. So these were obviously, these were, these were planted uh, from the same plant. They came from the same plant that was probably growing wild here. And it had to have either been one of these big red ones that crossed with a wild variety or a wild variety that crossed with the red ones because it's got the red flowers but it's got every other sign telling me that it's a it's a wild type amaranth it's got the branches it's got the green stem green leaves but uh, the only difference is the flowers and there's a big difference just between these two flowers so lots of genetic diversity here you know these there's there's amaranth that's cross that's crossing, you know, it's creating its own hybrids, you know, from a cultivated Mexican variety with, uh, with a local pigweed, kind of. So, <clears throat> so here's these two, and hopefully this kind of gives you a good comparison um, between all the different varieties that are grown in here and crossing together. You know, you've got the green variety, it's real short and bushy with green flowers. You've got the big, tall, red stem, red flowered, red leaf variety um, that gets 10 feet tall. And then obviously a mix between the two of them. So, and these, these grow all on their own. You know, all these seeds are going to drop and I'm going to try to collect as many of them as I can this year. And they just grow back year after year. So, uh, so yeah, so this would be part one of the series on genetic diversity in your garden and possibly creating new types of heirloom, heirloom plants that you can grow. You know, I don't think there's anywhere else that these varieties are grown because they're, they crossed here and nature hand selected these to grow. So, um, I'm going to keep seeds from, from these plants also and keep them separate, um, because you know, certain traits might be good for other other things, but this is my favorite. This one right here is my favorite. You know, it's um, a cross between the wild variety, has a big red flower spike on it, and um, it's been super healthy, you know. It's only about five to six feet, almost six feet tall, this plant right here, the flower spike. But if it's a cross with this wild variety, what's cool about that is it's perfectly adapted for this area. It, it, it's um, a natural hybrid and uh, the wild variety goes to seed really quick so it's got a short season 
and um, it doesn't get super tall but you could fit a ton of these plants in a small space I mean this thing right here it doesn't branch out very tall if you can kind of see that I mean it's only maybe a foot wide all the way up and at the base whereas this one right here I mean you've got flower spikes that come all the way to here and also all the way to over there so this is more of a bushy variety that's not as not as tall so so you get the best of both worlds I guess you know you get the red flowers the red leaves the red stem you still get branching which means more seeds per plant versus just one one at the top so um, so yeah I'm pretty stoked about that <clears throat> And I just kind of wanted to give you a comparison. There's some other stuff I want to talk about that I'll do in some future videos. Um, you know, creating new heirlooms, you know, and if, if, if you grow these year after year and it keeps producing the same type of flower and you get, you know, F1, F2, F3, after about F4, the fourth generation of the seed that produces just like the original one that you, that you harvested, you have a new heirloom, you know. And you can keep growing it. It's perfectly adapted for your area because you've you've grown it year after year, and it's held strong. It hasn't went back to the wild form or the the other variety. You know, if you're crossing stuff like this. So hopefully this will produce true year after year. This is a very cool variety of amaranth. You know, this one here is pretty cool too. It's got some cool looking flowers that are real clumpy on it, but but still. <clears throat> so I'm going to be keeping a lot of amaranth seeds for for next year and I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope maybe you'll kind of look into your garden for little minor variations the way the plant grows you know um, obviously conditions can make certain things grow a little bit different than others like fruit you might have a melon that might not be as big as others but if if you have completely totally different plants that look different and you have genetic diversity in the same group of seeds that you planted you might have something different you know, you might have a new variety and maybe you can name it after yourself or something like that. So, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, stay tuned for some more um, genetic diversity in the garden. Thanks for watching.